Hi, my name is Marie and I am the owner and creator here at Soft Taco Reusables where we make reusable cloth menstrual pads. We do make and offer and sell our cloth pads here, but I do understand that not everybody has the type of budget that allows them to be able to buy cloth pads or even buy disposable pads. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a tutorial on how you can sew your own so that you can have a super budget-friendly, amazing cloth pad collection that can last you years and years. So first off, we're gonna just go over some of the supplies you're gonna need in order to make your cloth pads. A cloth pad has three main components. It has a topper, a core, or absorbent layer and backer layer. The topper is the layer that is gonna go against your skin. It's what we want to have um, like really nice comfortable feel, maybe some wicking properties, that sort of thing. The core or the absorbent fabric is what we want to be able to hold a lot of liquid so that you can go a long time or long enough between changing your pad. And the backer is our water resistant layer. You don't have to use a water resistant layer if you used, um, you could even just use like 100% cotton if you really needed to. It just wouldn't last you as long. You'd need to change more frequently. Yeah, so let's start off with the fabrics here, the topper fabric. What I'm gonna use and what I'm gonna recommend using, at least if this is your first time sewing or your beginner sewer, um, is something like a cotton woven or a cotton flannel. Something that's 100% cotton that doesn't have any stretch. So this fabric doesn't have any stretch. So what I have here is 100% cotton woven. It's like a quilting cotton type of material. Feels really nice. It's still gonna work um, pretty well. And it's also really affordable. So it's gonna make um, your pads even less expensive. You could even use something like old bed sheets. If you have old t-shirts lying around, you could use that. Basically any sort of fabric that will absorb. So if you pour a little bit of liquid on top of that fabric, if it absorbs, you're good to go. You can use it for your top of fabric or frankly even your absorbent layers. So now the absorbent layer um, or layers depending on the fabric that you're using, I'll mention next. I am using something called Zorb. I order big quantities of it because I make them so they come on these huge rolls. A fabric that was designed to absorb uh, a lot of liquid, absorb it quickly, it works really well, that's why we love it in pads, but it is not the only option. If you are just starting out, something like a cotton flannel is really affordable, really accessible at most um, brick and mortar fabric stores, you can find it, and it's inexpensive, and it works really well as well. You just will need more and more layers of it to get higher absorbency levels. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Zorb. Now, the backer fabric. Um, usually we're looking for something that has some sort of water resistance. In our shop, we use something called soft shell fleece. In my opinion, it's kind of like the king of backer fabrics. It has a nice fleecy texture on the back of it and a um, highly water resistant, nearly waterproof layer that goes to the inside of the pad. It works super, super well. But if that's a little bit out of your budget or hard to find, because it's not always the easiest to find in stores, something like a blizzard fleece or an anti pill fleece, a polar fleece, there's a lot of different names for it, will work. It's not quite as water as waterproof as the soft shell fleece, but it still um, will give a good water resistance and is a lot more accessible. And then another fabric I want to mention that you can use is called PUL polyurethane laminate. Um, it works super well. It's very thin and waterproof. It's just a little bit more slippery and it's going to be harder to work with. So you can use it if that's what you have or that's what you have found. Just keep in mind that yeah your pad might be a little bit more slippery when you're wearing it and it might be a little bit trickier to work with especially if you're a beginner sewer. So that's the materials that we're going to use. Now let's go into the tools. So this is going to be a sewing machine tutorial. So you'll need some sort of sewing machine. It does not need to be fancy. It doesn't need to do all kinds of fancy stitches. Basically just a regular straight stitch will do and and while this isn't a hand sewing tutorial, you could follow like the basic methods, but where I'm sewing on the sewing machine, you could just hand sew. I'm not going to give any tips on that because I'm not an expert. You can try and look at other hand sewing tutorials to learn how to do that. It is still possible to sew your own pads if you have to do it by hand. It will just take a little bit longer. You'll need a pair of um, scissors, fabric scissors, or like a rotary cutter will work as well if you have that. Maybe a pair of like paper scissors for assembling your pattern, which I will cover in this next section here. You'll need needles for your sewing machine machine thread, some pins. I definitely recommend some pins. And then lastly, you're gonna need some type of fastener. So we use in our shop these plastic cam snaps, they're called. Um, they're just like little snap buttons that use that you can use to fasten your pad around your underwear. Some other options, you can use metal snaps. You can even um, sew on a button. You could use Velcro if you wanted. I'll put some links down below for where you can find cam snaps on Amazon with a little hand plier that will work perfectly, especially if you're only just sewing your own stash of cloth pads. And then lastly, as I kind of touched on, you will need your sewing pattern. So if you want to follow along exactly on this tutorial, I will put a link in the description below for where I found this pattern. Um, it's by a company called Versadile on, on Etsy. It's like a dollar. It is a paid pattern, but it's like a dollar or a dollar fifty. I can't remember. Um, so it's really inexpensive. But if that is something that's out of your budget, you can look on um, Google. You can just search like free cloth pad sewing pattern and some options will come up. 
The shape won't be exactly the same as this, but you can still follow the basic principles and the basic method that we're going to follow today in order to sew your own pads. Now, the first step to making your pad is going to be assembling your pad pattern. So this one here that I am using, this is how it comes. It's one sheet of paper with all these lines on it. I know it can be a little bit confusing if you've never looked at a sewing pattern before or cloth pad pattern before, but I will describe kind of how you assemble it here. Um, so first off, you see all these lines everywhere. There's these outer lines, but also these inner lines. These inner lines here um, that go all the way up here and all of that, those are for the absorbent layers, so the size of the absorbent layers. And then the outer layers here are for the shape of the pad. Now this is a sew on the line pattern. That means that we are gonna be sewing directly on this line. This is kind of gonna be the finished size and shape of the pad or close to it. Most cloth pad patterns are like that, um, but read the description if you're looking through a different cloth pattern whether or not they include seam allowance. So if they include seam allowance it might be a little bit different. This is a sew on the line with no seam allowance included and I will explain how that works a little bit down the road here. So first you're going to select what size of um, pattern you need and actually before that you're going to want to print two of these because you're going to want to assemble the layers together so you get a full pad and not just half a pad and then you're going to want to select what size you need. So here you see 7, 9, 11, 13, 15 if you cut out um, both ends at the seven line, you're gonna have a seven inch pad, both lines at the nine, you're going to have a nine inch pad. And we're gonna start with just a symmetric pattern. It's We're gonna do it pretty simple. And I think I'm gonna start and do the 11 inch. I think an 11 inch is a pretty good size for most people. Um, if you have a really heavy flow, you'll probably need larger. If you have a light flow, you'll need less, but it's a really good starting point. So what I'm going to do first is just cut off this excess here right at the end. And then we're going to take our other half of our pattern, line it up. And then I got some tape here. And tape it together. You can glue, use glue too. That's what you have. I just have tape. And then we are going to pick the size. I think I said I was going to do the 11. So I'm just going to start here. And cut all the way around with this pattern you can do you can see it has like a pointy edge and a curved edge um, whether or not you're more comfortable sewing like perfect points or little curves like that is up to you I like the curved I just think it looks a little bit nicer but as far as what the end product will look like it really doesn't make a difference now same with the wings here um, they have this bigger boxy one and then the pointed one the bigger boxy will be if you want like a wider pad in the center and the pointed ones are for a slightly narrower pad. I'm gonna go with the pointed. I think it, um, that size will fit better for most people. Again, um, adjust for your own personal preferences. So there we go, we have our finished pad template. Now, if you are planning to sew a lot of pads, you could duplicate this. So print off another two pages of this template and then also cut out your core layers. Um, these rectangle rectangle shapes uh, because I'm only just doing it for this tutorial I'm just gonna trace out my pad template and then I'll go and do my core cut out the excess and do the cores as well but yeah if you're doing a lot you can just print off multiple and then just keep using the same template over and over again so now the first actual kind of sewing step is to take your topper and you are going to put it wrong side up so there is like the pretty side of the fabric and then the non pretty side and you're going to put the non-pretty or the wrong side facing up. And then take your pad template, lay it on there, and you want to make sure that um, it all fits within, like, you don't want to put any of the trace line in your seam allowance or anything. Make sure it's all within the printed pretty part of the pattern. And then depending on your skill level, you can leave more or less excess around. And then trace. So I think I forgot to mention this in the supplies. If you want some kind of marker, Crayola washable markers work really well because they'll wash out if you don't um, perfectly sew on the line. Um, I use Sharpies all the time because I have a lot of practice. But you're just going to trace your pad template all the way around. So there we go. We have, you can see, our finished, uh, or our topper with our template, our pad shape traced out onto it. And then I am just going to cut that out. I'm just going to take my fabric scissors, you can use your rotary cutter, whatever you have, and just cut it out. Now, it doesn't matter how, you do not need to cut it perfectly, just rough cut, cut the shape out, leave excess so that it's a little easier for you for sewing. 
It does not need to be prettily cut out because we're going to trim off the excess later in one of the future steps. So there you go, you have your topper ready like that. And now I said um, before that if you were going to be making multiple of these, you might want to print off multiple copies of this and um, leave one that is just your pattern template like this and then cut out one for your core. Because I'm doing it for the tutorial, I'm just going to cut the core out of this shape right now. Now there are multiple lines for the core, so there in all of the sizes. We're just going to look at the biggest one right now because that's what we're sewing. There is a bigger rectangular rectangle and a narrower rectangle. I would say, depending on your skill level, start with the small, the narrower one if you're a beginner, and then the wider one if you're a little bit more advanced or as you get more practice. The wider will obviously give you more overall absorbency, but it does make it a little bit trickier to sew because when you're sewing, sometimes you bump the core. So we are going to, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to cut out the narrower rectangle. There we go, we have our core fabric template. And then I am just going to bring some of this Zorb here, unroll, ravel a little bit of it. And I am going to lay this on top of my core and trace out this shape onto my core fabric. So as far as the number of layers, with this fabric, I'm going to make just a moderate absorbency pad, which with Zorb, it will just be one layer. But depending on the fabric you're using, you may need more layers. So just trace out and cut out more layers depending on the fabric you have. I'll leave a little chart over here of the different fabric types that you could use and how many layers would be recommended for the absorbency level of the pad that you're sewing. So now I'm just going to take it and cut this guy out. So there we have our four layer and our topper layer here. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take our core or our absorbent fabric and we're going to attach it to the topper. So you're going to lay it in there roughly center. So do your best to eyeball it so it's like as close to the middle as you think you can get it. And then you can just take some pins and pin it in place. Depending on your skill level, use more pins, less pins, whatever. Make sure it's holding it in place. So there we go, we have the topper. And now while we are at the sewing table, we're gonna take our backer fabric and cut that out as well. I'm gonna lay that out. And um, right now I have the wrong, sorry, the side that I want to the outside of the pad facing up. And I'm just going to take this topper fabric and I'm gonna lay it on top, making sure that the sewing line is going to be all covered by um, like the backer fabric, I guess. You wanna make sure there's backer fabric everywhere that is within this pad shape. And then I'm just gonna rough cut it out again. Just like with the topper fabric, it doesn't need to be exact at all. We're just gonna cut it out. So now I have all my layers here ready to go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now here we are at the sewing machine. We have all of our prepped layers here. We're going to take just our topper fabric, pull the back of fabric aside for now, and just our topper with that Zorb fabric or whatever your absorbent layer that you're using prepped here. And we are just going to sew it on. So, um, go up to your absorbent layer and sew all the way along the edge using, I just use a straight stitch, that's all this machine can do. If you want to use a zigzag, you can use kind of whatever stitch you want, just anything to make sure it is going to be attached to the underside of this topper fabric. So I'm going to start, um, do a quick back stitch to lock in that sewing. And then I'm going to sew all the way around. I want to be pretty close to the edge but not so close that you're not catching the layers. And now we're almost back to the start and I'm gonna back stitch again. Cut that. And there we go, we have our absorbent layers attached to our topper fabric. And I'm just going to take out these pins now because we do not want pins left in our finished pad. So now our topper layer is all prepped. Now we're gonna take our backer fabric we are going to take it so that the fleecy side or the, the side that we want to the outside of the pad is facing up, facing up, so the right side up. And then you take your topper and you want the right side, the side that we want also to the outside of the pad facing down. So right sides together on this. Lay everything, make sure everything is nice and smooth, no bunches. And then we are going to sew all the way around here. Um, put pins in if you're new to sewing to make sure everything stays in place. But then we're just gonna sew all the way around leaving a hole to turn this around later. So we're gonna leave like at least an inch to an inch and a half sort of hole. So I'm gonna start at the top here and I'm gonna stop, start more to this side here. 
and I am going to start sewing right on that line and I'm going to backstitch a few times here to make that nice and strong. And then we're just going to do our best to sew all the way around while staying on that line. Close to the line as you can. If you're a little bit off, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so now I'm back to this top here. I'm gonna sew a little bit in and then I want to make sure I leave that opening there that's big enough to turn and I'm gonna back stitch. Cut it where you can see there is this area about this wide that is left unsewn. Okay, so now the next step is to cut, trim off the excess fabric around the pad. So we are gonna trim pretty close to the sewing all the way around, leaving a little tab here and you'll see why in the next step um, and I'll show you here so we're gonna start and right at that sewing so I don't know how well you can see there's that's where the stitch starts I'm gonna go like a few stitches in and cut straight towards without actual clipping you don't want to cut any of the actual stitches on this and then we are gonna trim um, I'm gonna leave maybe two one to two millimeters of excess around the whole thing I'm just gonna do that all the way around. And now I'm back to the other end of the stitching here. I'm not going to clip past the stitching and clip like maybe a couple stitches up to it. And then I'm just going to go straight up. There's this tab. I am going to trim off um, so that maybe there's like half to three quarters of an inch left in that tab like that. You can see. So we've trimmed all the way around. Now the last kind of trimming bit that we want to do in order to make sure your pad kind of turns and sit nicely, sits nicely, you want to go all of your inner corners and clip straight into the corner as close as you can without actually clipping the stitches. That just allows it to lay more flat after you turn it. Do that on all four of the corners. And then lastly, on the outer corners, we can kind of do the same, trim off even more of the excess than the other areas of the pad, just to make sure it sits nice and flat and looks nice and pretty. So now we have our pad all trimmed, and since this is inside out essentially right now, we are going to flip it. So you're going to take your um, opening here, open it up, and then you're just going to kind of reach in, grab the layers, and turn it. So you want to um, not pull too hard or be too rough with it so you don't pop any stitches or anything like that, but um, just make sure you get everything turned and push out, make sure everything is pushed out. So what I like to do, I have um, just an old like large knitting needle and I use that to push out all the corners because it's hard to reach some of the corners and make sure everything gets pushed out really well if you don't use something like this go all the edges are pushed out I'm gonna just kind of play with this a little bit fiddle it with the edges make sure everything seems like it's fully pushed out all the way like this and now here um, if you want to and actually something I recommend if you are newer to sewing is to iron it um, take your pad like this and give it a quick iron so it's nice and flat because the next step, step, the top stitch, is the last step, and once it is sew last sewing step, and once you have done the top stitch, that's like how the pad is going to look. So if you iron it first and make sure everything is nice and flat, you'll have more, you'll more likely get like a nicer looking pad. You don't have to do it; um, it just might help you with the sewing, help have the pad look nice and neatly finished. So we are going to now do what's called the top stitch. I'm going to sew all the way around the edge on the top here, and 
So the reason we left that flat before, see how, I'm not sure what you can see, but there's like that extra fabric that is po um, poking inside. We want to have left enough of a flap to make sure that I can catch, I can feel them here, I can feel those flap layers. Um, make sure I can catch that to fully close that hole and not have any extra frame. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start on the side here. So here is my turn hole that I want to make sure I close. I'm just gonna line up so like the edge of my presser foot here is lined up with the edge of the pad. And we're just gonna sew all the way around. Again, I'm gonna back stitch, lock in my sewing, and then do your best to keep your top stitch, you know, as straight as you can, just because it looks nicer. At the end of the day, it'll be functional, even if it doesn't look perfect, especially if they're just for you, nobody else is gonna see it. We're meeting up with that sew line again, and we are going to back stitch again. And then I'm going to just take my scissors and cut off all of the excess threads. So there's one here on the core that we forgot to cut earlier. Don't cut your fabric. I almost clipped my fabric. Go to the back. Trim that. So there we go. Now we have our pad almost done. We're gonna take it over to the other table to add the snaps. So now we have our pad here that is fully sewn. It just needs the fastener on the wings. Um, I'm gonna use the plastic snaps and this snap press. Um, I'll put a link down in the description below for some hand plier snap presses and some snaps that you can get for relatively inexpensive. Um, I actually don't even have my hand pliers anymore, so I can't really show you how to use those, but it's the same method just with the hand pliers. So our snaps have two types of pieces. I'm not sure well you can see that. There is the, um, what's called the stud here, um, and then the socket. So you need to have at least one of each so that they can fit together. And I'll show you kind of how to put those on to make sure they snap properly. So first off, to make sure our pad snaps nice and evenly, I'm gonna take it and I'm going to, without the snaps, I'm gonna fold over the wings. Um, and kind of line it up so that it looks the way I, about I want it to look. Um, with this pattern, it kind of pulls in here a little bit, wraps a little bit around your underwear. I'm gonna take this, it's called an awl. If you buy some hand pliers for the snaps, it should come with one. And I'm gonna line it up, making sure that I'm lining through both layers. And then I'm gonna take the wings and kind of pull it through. Don't push so much with the awl, but rather pull with the wings. And be careful, because you don't want to actually go and poke through your pad, because then you have a hole that you might have leaks from. So we have our holes there nice and lined up for our snap placement. Now we're gonna take one of the wings, I'm gonna start with this one, take our cap, poke it through the hole like that. And then in this thing, I already have the other piece of the stud pushed in there with the hand pliers. You probably have to hold it a little bit differently, but it's the same kind of concept. And then we squish down. Now I have my stud applied. So now to make sure that this fastens properly, we need to put the other end on the opposite direction. So in this one, we took and we put our cap through like the top side. With the other piece, we're gonna go and put our cap through the bottom side. And then I'm gonna change out my die here. And here is my socket piece. I just kind of push it up in there. And I have cap there, cap side goes down and push. Now we have our snaps attached and when you wrap it around they snap and the pad snaps together nice and evenly and there we have our finished pad. And there you have it. We have our fully completed, fully functional cloth pad. You're gonna just want to give this a quick wash before you use it to get off any you know dust or anything that was on your uh, materials while you were sewing and all that and then you're good to go. You can use this for years and years. Just wash and use again.